There's a lot of misconceptions about non-functional prototypes. For starters, most people focus on just the word prototype. What do you think about when you hear the word prototype? That sure, it might work, but ultimately, if it proves that it will work, you'll rebuild it from the ground up. That could not be further from the truth. A non-functioning prototype goes through the same exact design process that any other app, any other software goes through. This is wireframing. This is high fidelity. This is product flows. Everything that you expect to go through when designing a completed product happens the same way with a non-functioning prototype. Why is this the case? The important thing to note here is that no asset goes to waste. When you prove that your NFP works and that you have the money to go put into programming, you don't go back to the drawing board. You don't go and redo wireframes. You don't go put together all new designs. You literally pick up where you left off with your non-functioning prototype. For example, let's say your app's gonna cost you $50,000 total from start to finish. This is a full app. This means this is up and running on the app store. You have real users. Let's say $10,000 of this comes from the design aspect. Once the non-functioning prototype is done, you don't have to spend that again later. So that means later on that remaining 40K is all that you need to get up to market. And that works in your benefit. That's a real asset that you have. A huge concern for many is that, hey, I'm not technical. An investor's not gonna care about me. That couldn't be further from the truth. Again, I might sound a little biased here, but in the nine years we've been running Chop Dog, we've helped countless of our clients who have no technical bone in their body raise millions of dollars in funding. The reason why? One is presentation. The reality is if you're someone that's gonna pitch just an idea at an investor, of course they're not gonna take you seriously. To them, you're like, you just have an idea, you have no assets, you have no team assembled, you have nothing going for you except an idea. And what stops me from just running your idea, making it happen myself, my own money, and maintaining full equity? Now that you have that perspective, let's walk through what a non-functioning prototype can do. For example, now you're coming to an investor and be like, hey, I put my money where my mouth is. That's number one. Number two, I have an incredible product to show you what it will really look like. I can show you the true pixel for pixel, screen by screen, how this app will work, how it will behave, and why it's going to make you, the investor, a return of investment. Three, I have a team. How do you know I have a team? Because how else did I build this? I also have these designs. What you're doing is you're mitigating your own risk to an investor and maximizing your upside. And that's where that common misconception about, well, I'm non-technical is thrown out the window. A classic misconception in the software world is the team you work with on one phase is your team for life. The reality is how many times have you heard about people having to hire internally? change teams completely. Things change, your financial situation might change, your investor situation might change. The cool thing about a non-functional prototype and the myth that it just demolishes is that you can have one team design the entire product and you can have another team completely program that separate. You don't need to use the same team. At the end of the day, what you're getting is a well thought out, methodically planned UI UX, user interface design, user experience for you to translate into a fully functioning app. Did you decide to work with the same team to program it, that designed it? You could. If you plan to go to a team overseas to save yourself a couple dollars, you can. If your job is to go and bring in internal CTO and a technical team, you can. Nothing infuriates me more than hearing about how MVPs are not scalable. That is complete nonsense. An MVP, if you do it right, is the quality product the same foundation that you're going to build off of for years and years and years to come. So it shouldn't be more expensive to add to it later on. It shouldn't require redevelopment. It shouldn't cost you a fortune to build and add to it. In fact, you are literally building your foundation with your MVP. It is your product. It's what your product will always be. It's just imagine you build a skyscraper and you furnish the first 10 floors. The rest of the skyscraper is still there for you to build off of. You're not gonna have to recreate infrastructure. You're not gonna have to add on top of it. You're just being pragmatic. It's forcing you to only focus on the essential features and functionalities right now, not to add fluff. A great example here is, pretend this is an artboard. I can't draw over the board because this is where I can color. This is where I can design. That's the same way an MVP works. It forces you to focus only on the essentials and what you set out to accomplish while forgetting the noise, forgetting the temptations, forgetting everything else that's non-essential for day one.